The world is becoming less free. That according to the latest Global Freedom Survey by Freedom House. And if you follow the news regularly, you know that the persecution of Christians worldwide is on the upswing. Our next guest knows a lot about it. He's traveled to restricted and hostile countries for the voice of the martyrs for more than 20 years. Todd Nettleton is the host of VOM Radio, author of the new VOM book, When Faith is Forbidden. 40 days on the front lines with persecuted Christians. So, Todd, it's good to see you again. Before we discuss the book, I know you've served the persecuted church now for 20 years. I'm sure you've seen persecution grow worse. So why do you think it's getting worse? Why is that happening? You know, I, I think part of the answer to that question is actually good news. And the reason that persecution is increasing in many places is because the church is growing. There are more Christians in the Middle East. There are more Christians in China, which means there are more potential targets for persecution. So yes, persecution is increasing, but in part at least, that's actually good news because it represents the growth of the church. So let's begin with those detailed in five chapters of your book, Turkey, the Malatya Martyrs. Now, next month, it'll be 14 years since the death of those three Christians. Now, there are two Turks and a German. Remind us what happened to them, Todd, and, and what did you learn from meeting with their families? Well, as you say, two Turks and a German Christian were killed in the offices of a Christian publishing house there in Malatya in central Turkey. Uh, the five guys who committed the murders had posed as seekers. In fact, two of them had visited the church. They had met with the pastor. They'd asked questions uh, indicating, hey, we want to know more about Jesus. We want to know more about being a Christian. All of that was a ruse in order to set up a meeting at the Christian publishing house where they showed up with ropes and knives and they killed our three brothers. Uh, I had the chance to be in Turkey just seven weeks after those killings and uh, got to meet numerous people involved in the story. I met the two widows from the two martyrs who had been married. I met the fiance of the third martyr who was engaged at the time of his death. What I came away with was just the faithfulness of God and the amazing courage, particularly of the two widows. Uh, just 24 hours after their husbands were killed, they were on national television in Turkey forgiving the men who had killed their husbands, offering forgiveness, literally echoing the words of Christ on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. A Muslim journalist in Turkey said those two ladies, by offering forgiveness, did more for Christianity in Turkey than a thousand missionaries could have done in a thousand years. That's the impact of the forgiveness. And I think that's part of the reason that that story has so impacted and, and so stayed with me all these years. And I'm always amazed at the attitude of Christians who have been in prison for their faith. You feature quite a few in the book, but tell us about Mrs. Choi, the woman from North Korea, and what she told you about her time in the gulag there. You know, Mrs. Choi had just an incredibly sad story, and it was, it was hard to sit with her and listen to the suffering that she had had. One of the amazing things about Mrs. Choi's story, her husband was in the Communist Party in North Korea. He was a person of some influence, and so... At the end of her trial, her first trial, she was actually found innocent. The, the judge said, you're innocent. These charges are, have no merit. You can go. Well, the Communist Party, the North Korean, the regime there, they, they couldn't allow that to stay. So they quickly said, oh, wait a minute. We're going to have a redo. We're going to have another trial. This time, before she was taken to the trial, Mrs. Choi was beaten so severely that she couldn't even speak at the trial. She couldn't even talk in her own defense. And of course, this time the regime got the, the verdict that they wanted. She was found guilty and sent off to prison. Like our sisters in Turkey, the, the Christians we meet have already come to the point of forgiveness. They've been able to say, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I forgive my persecutors. Uh, Sister Troy wasn't there yet. I think one of the things that helps us to do is it helps us pray for Christians who are in that spot. They've been persecuted and they're trying to forgive, but they're not there yet. And we can pray that the Holy Spirit will empower them to come to that point of saying, I forgive, I forgive even the people who persecuted me. You're among the first to interview our mutual friend from the Czech Republic, Peter Yashik. He was in prison for 15 months with ISIS jihadists in Sudan. You've known Peter for a long time, so have I. You were surprised though, when you met him shortly after his release. Why was that? 
we wondered as I went to Czech Republic to meet with him after his release, what what's going to be left? What's going to have happened to Peter? How is Peter going to be in comparison to the Peter that we used to know before prison, before being in a cell with ISIS fighters? And I came back from Czech Republic and I told my wife, he's the same Peter. He just loves Jesus more now. Somehow that 14 months in prison had actually strengthened his love for Christ and deepened his love for Christ. And so I came back and said, he's the same Peter, but he loves Jesus even more now than he did before. A lot of great stories, loving Jesus more. Okay, the book is When Faith is Forbidden, 40 Days on the Front Lines with Persecuted Christians. I saw the book on Amazon. Where else can people get it, Todd? It's available wherever you buy books. It is published by Moody Publishers. We have links uh, to different retailers at whenfaithisforbidden.com. So you can find links to wherever you'd like to buy it, whenfaithisforbidden.com. Okay, Todd Nettleton, congratulations on the book and thanks for sharing. Thank you, Gary. It's always fun to talk to you.